the other day, I was out driving, um, and I noticed something really beautiful. And I was going to say that if any of you have been outside at night lately, you've probably seen something like it too. I saw a beautiful display of light on the river of the homes that I passed while I was driving. Um, I actually really love looking at Christmas lights. I think they're beautiful. Um, it's a wonderful decoration. And, you know, when I see them, I'm very aware that it's not my tradition, but it is the tradition of many people who live around us who do celebrate the holiday of Christmas. And I think it's really beautiful to see the beautiful displays that they put up and the way that they're celebrating this time of year. Um, you know, and uh, Allison mentioned to me this morning, it's actually a unique thing for her to be in shul on December 25th, because uh, like so many uh, Jewish doctors and medical professionals, she's used to being on call today um, to help out other members of our society. Um, so, you know, this time of year, it can actually really be a reminder that we are a minority in a predominantly Christian culture, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's true that we've experienced some anti-Semitism and thanks to our adult ed committee uh, and Terry's work, we've been learning a lot about that this year. Um, but being a minority doesn't have to be a bad thing. And in fact, there are many times and many ways um, when you know it's, it's perfectly comfortable for us. And in fact, being a minority can highlight for us that we are Jewish, that we're proud of being Jewish, and can make us really think about what is it that makes us feel so Jewish and what is special about that. Um, and we don't have to go any further than Parshat Shmot, the story in some ways of how the Jews became a people. Um, we don't have to go any further than that for some examples of what does it look like to be uniquely Jewish. Now, in Parshat Shemot, the Jews are actually experiencing oppression throughout this parasha. And there is a midrash that actually says that the reason that the Jews merited being redeemed from Egypt is because they kept their distinct identity despite the persecution. And there are three things that the midrash says that they held on to says they held on to their names, they held on to their language, and they held on to their distinctive mode of dress. Now, this midrash was actually made popular by the 19th century uh, scholar, the Khatam Sofer, who is known for the statement, kol chadash asur, everything new is forbidden. So it might not be surprising to us that the Khatam Sofer, who really in many ways is the founder of modern orthodoxy, that he was a fan of this midrash that spoke about the importance of the Jews holding on to these outer markers of their identity. But if we look a little more closely, this midrash is really strange. Because who was the leader of the Jewish people in Egypt? It was Joseph. And what happens to Joseph as soon as he becomes a leader in Egypt, second to Pharaoh? He changes his name. He gets an Egyptian name. And when his brothers come to get food from him, they don't recognize him. They think he's an Egyptian. Why do they think that? Well, I'm going to guess he probably dressed like an Egyptian. And we know that they were speaking to him through an interpreter. So, yes, he does remember his Hebrew because he can understand what the brothers are saying to themselves when they think they're talking in private. But he's speaking Egyptian and using an interpreter. So actually, in some ways, we could say he didn't hold on to any of these three things. So what would make us think that the Israelites after him did? It's a little strange. And in fact, we know that throughout the ages, Jews have comfortably integrated in certain ways into the societies that we've been a part of. 
In fact, a few weeks ago, Rabbi Lerner spoke about the time of the Maccabees and how the Hellenizers took on the Greek methods of dress and of behavior in different ways. And we've seen that throughout history. And it doesn't mean that Jews have stopped being uniquely Jewish. We've hung on for quite some time, even while taking on some of the outer, uh, these outer uh, symbols, right, of, of the society around us, some of the ways of integrating and of being a part of societies. We look around in this room, and I don't think anybody here could be mistaken for an ancient Israelite uh, in the way that we look or in the way that we dress, um, so or the way that we speak. So there's more to it. Even without these three things, it is still possible to hold on to a Jewish identity. And so what does it take? What really is the core of what it means? Well, let's take a look at Moses. I'd like to take a look at what happens to him. Um, one of the earliest occurrences that we have of Moses as an adult going out into the world. Now, Moses, as we know, grew up as the adopted child of Pharaoh's daughter. So it stands to reason that Moses identifies as an Egyptian. And in fact, later when he goes to Midian and he meets Sipora, his future wife and her family, they talk about him as an Egyptian. They say, we met an Egyptian man at the well. So it's interesting that in this verse, which is chapter two, verse 11, by Hebrew Hahem, it was in those days, sometime after that, by Yidal Moshe, Moses grew up. By Yitze, he went out, El Echav, to his brothers, to his fellows. Who are his brothers? Who are they? The Egyptians. I mean, we know that he's Jewish. We know that he's Jewish. So there might be some ambiguity here. But he thinks he's Egyptian. Seems like he probably does. And in fact, we come to learn in a moment that there were both Jews and Egyptians in the place that he went to. Because he went to a place where the Jews were building and the Egyptians were looking over them. So he went out to his brothers. Bayar Basiv Lotam. And he saw their suffering. Well, now we're seeing a switch because who was suffering? The Jews. Bayar Ish Mitzrima Ke Ishivri. And he saw an Egyptian man kill a Hebrew man. Me Echav from his brothers. So at the beginning of this verse, there might be some ambiguity about how Moses identifies, but by the end, he sees an Egyptian man hitting one of his brothers, one of his fellow Israelites. What is it that leads Moses to identify so strongly with the people who, as far as he knows, he's not necessarily a part of. There's no revelation taking place in this verse. Nobody tells him, oh, by the way, this is who you are. God isn't present. There's nothing religious going on in here. What happens? He sees oppression. He sees behavior by one of his fellow Egyptians that he doesn't feel he can identify with. And instead, he identifies with the oppressed Israelite. It's his sense of justice, his sense that this behavior is not okay. That's the behavior, that's, that's what we see that leads him to this shift. So for Moses, what is it that makes him so clearly an Israelite? Well, it's his values. It's his values. And of course, later he does come to understand who he is, that he is a part of these people and to come and to lead them out of Egypt, out of slavery. So what does this mean for us? 
What does it mean to be Jewish? Well, okay, language might be part of it. Without the Hebrew language, you know, it's a little bit hard to engage in some of our rituals, maybe to, you know, to connect to some of our learning, but that's not the core. Names, well, you know, there are some identifiably Jewish names, okay, but you don't need that to be Jewish, to feel Jewish. Um, it's our values, it's who we are, it's the community that we identify with, and it's the choices that we make. It's what we do together as a community, as well as individuals, and it's our values that we connect to as Jews. Some of these are universal values, but we connect them through the lens of our tradition. So I, I pray for all of us that we continue to be able to identify as Jews, not just in terms of any outward markers of that, though many of us may choose to have some outward markers of that, but in terms of who we are, how we identify, and the values that we uphold. Shabbat Shalom. Amen.